This urban legend begins deep in the jungle with a self-styled explorer, an executive whose hobby is travel photography. His idea of a great vacation is leaving civilization behind and venturing to the far-flung reaches of the earth. The more remote the setting, the better he likes it. He thrives on challenges you just don't find in the big city. He treks through little known parts of the world, documents rarely seen rituals, and even shares dinner and drinks with some of the residents of the exotic lands he visits. Returning home, he's rested and ready to get back to urban life. But one day, while back in the office, he begins to experience headaches. Initially, it's only a minor irritation. But as the days pass, they grow worse. Eventually, they become persistent and intolerable. Nothing he takes seems to help. Then one day, he discovers that he's bleeding from the ear. At last, our adventurer decides to see a doctor. I think there is something very she examines him and is immediately concerned. She decides to run a long series of tests, trying to track down the cause of his strange problem. Our explorer has no idea of what's going on. He's eventually given a thorough brain scan. After days of testing, the doctor gives him the horrifying news. A small insect, an earwig, has infested his brain. While out in the jungle, it crawled into his ear and is now eating its way through his head. I'm sorry. Even worse, it has just laid thousands of eggs. The world is filled with dangerous creatures and parasites. But is there actually a brain-eating bug that enters through the human ear? As it turns out, there really is a creature called an earwig. There's a large group of insects called earwigs. There's about 1,800 species. Most of them are found in the tropics, but there are some found in Europe and North America as well. A typical earwig is a fairly elongate, beetle-like insect. But the most outstanding part of it is a pair of forceps-like pinchers on the end of its tail or its abdomen. And it uses these pinchers to defend itself. It also uses them to attack prey. So it'll actually go up to another insect and grab it with its forceps and start feeding on them. They're called earwigs because of these urban legends of crawling into people's ears. And apparently they're called earwigs in several different languages. So it hasn't just occurred in the English language. But are these creatures the brain-eaters of legend? Stories about such infestations go back to ancient Rome. It's very hard to say what the origin is, but certainly there's a similar story that goes back at least 1,500 or maybe more years. In the Babylonian Talmud, the emperor Titus laid waste to Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. And uh, several centuries afterwards, the rabbis, when discussing the emperor Titus, talked about when he returned to Rome, a gnat entered his nose and kept butting up against his brain until it bored into it and he eventually died. And when they opened his skull, they found a growth in there the size of a small bird. This particular tale has a moral structure because Titus, in the view of the Jews, was the destroyer of the temple. God was going to punish him for his crime and indeed punished him. The Titus story was repeated in uh, Jewish folklore through the Middle Ages uh, up until the present day. It's had a literary history and undoubtedly an oral history along with it. It may have given rise to some of these other stories. The story is very similar to the earwig story, except the earwig story often lacks that moral structure. We don't know why this particular person was plagued with the earwig boring into its brain. The Oxford English Dictionary dates the idea of earwigs gnawing through the human head as far back as the year 1000. In the 19th century, explorer John Hanning Speak, who discovered the source of the Nile River, 
wrote of a horrible black beetle that entered his ear during the night. He tried everything from hot butter to a pen knife to dig it out. Only after months of infection did the parts of the dead bug finally emerge in his earwax. In March of 1972, the earwig legend got a huge boost when it became the basis for an episode of the Rod Serling TV series, Night Gallery. In the real world, the human brain is quite susceptible to a number of deadly parasites. The parasites cause a lot of the most important diseases in the world, such as malaria, which is one of the largest killers of humans. Onchocerciasis, or river blindness, is caused by a parasite. African sleeping sickness is another major parasite that kills many people around the world. As for earwigs, the environment they prefer would seem to make the urban legend quite credible. You usually find them under logs, under rocks, under buildings. Female earwigs like dark, secluded places, places with high humidity. It does sound just like a human ear, which is probably why occasionally in the past these insects have gone into people's ears but that doesn't mean the rest of the urban legend is correct. They don't feed on human brain cells and they don't bore through the human ear. Basically, in the canal, you do have a moist environment, which is usually great for bugs to manage to survive. But as you get deeper and deeper into the canal, it becomes very constricted. It can become acidic. There is a lot of wax in there that can make for bugs just getting trapped and slowly dying because of suffocation. This is what happened to the beetle that plagued John Hanning speak. It was caught in his ear, but never ate into his brain. Ironically, the most likely candidates for ear infestation are not intrepid explorers. We usually find these bugs in little kids' ears, not in travelers into the deep dark recesses of Africa or other such nations. Usually those bugs stay in the early part of the exterior canal, they never really get into the middle ear. Just because it's an insect doesn't mean it can eat anything and make its living on any kind of food. It doesn't recognize humans or large bodies as something that's appropriate for it to eat. The story must also be false because the victim would not live long enough to tell the tale. More than likely when a patient comes in this sick and has some kind of brain infestation or infection, we discover the results on autopsy. A patient's not going to come in with a bleeding ear and suddenly you find out, oh my God, their brain is infected with thousands of bugs. Just doesn't happen.